the Black Panther. Now more than ever, he is one of the most iconic characters in all of comicdom. I am going to share with you today my top five favorite Black Panther stories of all time. This is Be Real with D-Real. Yo, it's your man D-Real and edutainment is what I do. I am very excited about this particular episode because it's going to be covering my favorite comic book character, the Black Panther. If you've been under a rock, then you don't know that Black Panther had a movie released in 2018 and the titular role was played by the now deceased Chadwick Boseman. There's been a lot of controversy, chit chat back and forth about recasting the role, not to recast. I say recast personally with all my heart and soul. And also, before I get into this countdown, I want y'all to do two things for me. First thing I want you to do, like, comment, and subscribe to the Be Real with D-Real page so that I can get more material to you about Black Panther and other characters. Number two, because I feel so strongly about it, and if you haven't seen it already, uh, go back and watch my recast T'Challa show right here on the Be Real with D-Real page, and I tell about why it is so important not to nix such an iconic character, especially to young Black boys. They need it so dearly. In the comments below, put recast T'Challa. When I get enough of you guys in my comments saying recast T'Challa, I will in fact start a petition. Um, I know they're already moving forward with production in July on Black Panther 2, AKA Wakanda forever, um, but it is what it is. But I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop wasting time. I'm gonna get to it and we are gonna do it, all right? Now, I base this on the, the, the overall entertainment of the story, some of them are, 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 are drawn out over many issues. Some are resolved in a couple of issues, but they are all iconic in nature and, and magnitude because they show different facets of T'Challa and show that he's not just a heart-shaped, herb-filled, vibranium suit-wearing African king. He's a whole lot more. And, and, and you'll find that out as I go along. And as we start off with number five, my number five top Black Panther story of all time is of course, the origin story. Number five is the origin story. The Black Panther's origin story takes place, well, initially, takes place in uh, the now legendary and incredibly expensive, I found it, Black, uh, sorry, Fantastic Four, number 52, Came out in 1966. Stanley and Jack Kirby did the writing and drawing chores. And it basically is a story where T'Challa invites the Fantastic Four to Wakanda to whoop up on him to see if he's tough enough to take on his real foe, who happens to be Claw. I feel like Claw is, is an excellent adversary for T'Challa because they are the antithesis of one another. Um, Claw being a being composed of solidified sound and Black Panther being the greatest representative of vibranium, a, a sound and just energy dampener in general. Basically, after amends are made, they go and face off against Claw who they kick into his machine and it turns him into living sound and he comes back and he's got solidified sound creatures, big gorillas and birds and such. Uh, but then they discover because he's made of a uh, solidified sound, vibranium is his kryptonite. Great story shows T'Challa's resourcefulness. Um, it shows that 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 T'Challa is going, is willing to go to great lengths to accomplish his goals. 
and to show that he is perhaps one of, if not the greatest king in all of Wakanda or that Wakanda has ever had. The number four story, the, the, the best story, Black Panther story of all time, number four, has to be, without a doubt, Panther's Quest. Panther's Quest takes place in a comic book called Marvel Comics Presents that had little compilation stories of different superheroes in it. And Panther's Quest takes place uh, in 1988, and it takes place in Marvel Comics Presents number 13 through 37. Basically, Ramonda, the queen mother of Wakanda, whom in comic continuity is actually T'Challa's stepmother and not his biological mother, is kidnapped by South African radicals. And as you might realize and recognize in 1988, we were having all kinds of problems in South Africa with apartheid. This story hits heavily upon the apartheid, an apartheid-based establishment and the need for it to go away. Also, it showcases a non-vibranium costumed T'Challa and how he has to deal with all of the pain and things that are heaped on him. In this storyline, I think nobody short of Wolverine has taken more damage. I mean, he's dragged through barbed wire, he's shot, but he's got to get his stepmom. And, you know, that just goes to show the level of love, faith, and commitment that a man like T'Challa makes when he's ready to, 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 to handle business and, and just be an overall great human being. Um, number three, my, 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 my number three would have to be who is the Black Panther, which takes place in Black Panther volume three, I believe it is, issue one through six. 2003 is when it came out. And this image behind me is from one of the covers of that Black Panther run uh, by Reginald Hudlin. And it looks like he's reaching out to grab me, doesn't it? Uh, um, but basically, um, it is a retcon of T'Challa's origin story, where it uh, incorporates a lot of the um, actions, events, and things that we see in the 2018 Black Panther movie, such as um, Challenge Day. Uh, in comics, in comic continuity, Challenge Day is a whole lot better because it doesn't just go one-on-one. -on -one. Anybody who thinks they are worthy to be king can step into the arena and T'Challa has to take them all on. Um, at the time, T'Challa's uncle was standing in for the, the slain T'Chaka as Black Panther. So it would make sense. Your brother is worthy to become the Black Panther. But he held the mantle down until T'Challa was old enough to take it. And T'Challa was the one who came into the arena, knocked his uncle out, ascended to the throne, and to the mantle of Black Panther. Also, this story run shows you that iconic ass whooping that T'Challa's grandfather gives to Captain America during World War II, who comes in all of his star-spangled glory to let people know America's coming up in here. And Azari the Wise was like, no, catch these claws, catch these hands, colonizer. Great story. Also goes on to tell a little side story about Claw trying to circumvent and get his way into um, Wakanda uh, through the internet of all places. Uh, T'Challa meets him there too. It, it, and it also showcases um, T'Challa's preparedness, his ability to be ready to handle and deal with whatever situation comes. Great storyline. I suggest you pick it up. And by the way, all of these stories that I'm telling you about are in um, trade paperback form, so you don't have to go and collect them one at a time, or if you're into digital, all of this stuff is digital. 
before I go on to the last two, what I need y'all to do again, comment, like, and subscribe if you're digging what I'm shoveling so that I can give you new material on the one. Real talk. Number two on the Black Panther stories top five all time is King Solomon's Frog. This is a story where, uh, well, first of all, it's by Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby does the writing and drawing chores on the first, oh, about eight or nine issues of this Black Panther run back in 76, 77. Uh, and Jack can tell a pretty good story itself. And basically the story about King Solomon's frog is about King Solomon's frogs. Uh, Black Panther is hanging out with this little person <laughs> appropriately enough named Mr. Little. Go figure. Lazy Jack. Lazy. Now, T'Challa and Mr. Little meet a, 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 a very strangely clad woman by the name of Princess Zonda. And she's looking for King Solomon's frogs, treasure, whatever. And they get into King Solomon's uh, treasure vault and they find this frog. And th this frog isn't just any ordinary artifact. It has the ability to send an individual through time and space or draw an individual out of a random place in time and space. And when they touch it, they activate it and it draws... An, an, an individual from the future, individual from the future there. And boy, it's like, he's like 6 million years in the future. So he's got this great big alien head and he's got an eye in the back of his head with a disintegration beam and he's got laser beams that he shoots at this. Here, just, just look at the dude. T'Challa manages to find a way to knock this powerful alien out and send him back to his own time frame. This story is only the beginning of a, of a quest and adventure that T'Challa and Mr. Little end up going on that, 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 that has them dealing with giant yetis, samurai, um, and people who want the potion of eternal youth. Go figure. But it shows the fun-loving sort of caricature side of Black Panther. And that's kind of a lot of what Jack Kirby's version of Black Panther slowly started to kind of devolve into. Fortunately, though, Jerry Bingham took over the chores um, with, I believe, issue 11. And the art changed drastically. I'm not saying it was better because we're talking about Jack King Kirby here. Um, but the art was different and, and it was, it was a refreshing pace from Jack's like huge action pencils. Other, uh, otherwise, overall, King Solomon's Frog, pretty good story. Only ran two issues. It was quickly resolved back in the day when they would resolve comic stories in like two issues. So before we move on to number one, uh, I want to give some honorable mentions. Uh, a couple of honorable mentions, uh, Black Panther, The Man Without Fear. This was a storyline um, that actually took place in Daredevil's comic right after the Shadow Shadowland storyline, uh, where while uh, Matt was convalescing, he asked uh, T'Challa to step in and protect uh, Hell's Kitchen for him, which he did. And at the time, he was uh, bereft of, of his panther powers and vibranium technology. I think it was a great display of showing that um, T'Challa is more than just vibranium and heart-shaped potions. He put it down. He, 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 kept, he kept Hell's Kitchen safe so much to the point where they changed the name of the comic from Black Panther the Man Without Fear to Black Panther the Most Dangerous Man Alive. Um, other, uh, prominent storylines is, a uh, uh, a story called Panther's Prey that took place in the, uh, Black Panther limited storyline. It was a, it was a four issue limited series. 
Um, and it involved this scientist by the name of Solomon Prey. And he basically experimented on himself, gave himself like claws and bat wings and met up with T'Challa and scratched him up real bad. And he had to convalesce and, 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 and overcome this guy and overcome his injuries. Also, this storyline tells a story of uh, like a, a drug like crack infesting Wakanda and, and this young boy who once saved his life on another adventure is doing Wakanda crack, you know? And it was right around, it was like around 87, 88, right around the time when crack was actually booming in real life. Um, other storyline, there was a, a, this is a separate Black Panther limited series, four issue series, 1988, one through four, where the Panther guy feels like Black Panther is not doing his best to show that he is, worthy of the mantle and there's also uh, a story uh, a side story going on where he has to travel to South Africa and deal with this group of uh, uh, apartheid superheroes called appropriately enough the supremacists he whoops them there's some of them are far more powerful than he is uh, but he manages to defeat this entire team um, and that just goes to show you that you don't have to be superhuman to kick the crap out of superhumans. Now, without a further any further delay, man, y'all got to know. My number one Black Panther story of all time, Panther's Rage. Panther's Rage takes place in jungle action. I know that sounds kind of racist for a, a comic book for the Black Panther, a Black superhero to be appearing in. Maybe not racist, but just, do you really want to call it jungle action? Not their fault. Jungle action was, was a title from back in the Marvel days when Marvel was called Atlas Comics. Um, and it was, back then it was literally stories related to the jungle you know, uh, Kazar, you know, that kind of a thing. Because back then, Kazar was in the jungle stuff and not necessarily dinosaurs. Now, this is a story about, well, it gives you your introduction, your very first look at Eric Killmonger. Damn, Eric, you got to do something about that outfit and that jerry curl, dude. That jerry curl afro is just not working for you, bro. I'm glad they gave you dreads in the movie because I don't know how they would have did that hairstyle. But anyway, it's basically a story of, of, of Killmonger and, 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 and the schemer and planner that he is. And he sends all of these foes up against the child, everything from witch doctors to mad scientists to snake charmers to dinosaurs, literal dinosaurs. Killmonger unleashes a stampede of dinosaurs in Wakanda. What I also like about this uh, storyline, it also shows uh, Black Panther's cat-like prowess you know there's a lot of those scenes where he's doing flips and somersaults and banking and bouncing off of things and he's also getting his suit ripped up a lot because but this story takes place uh i think it runs from like 74 to like 76 through uh the jungle action comic 6 through 18 um and t'challa is to me, he's strong while being vulnerable at the same time. He's also carrying on a romance with uh, with a uh, with a torch singer from DC named Monica Lynn. And most of the Wakandans do not approve of her because she's an outsider. And basically, at the at the at the at the apex of this story when we come to the place where it's like 
T'Challa and Killmonger have to square off. Killmonger puts it on him, man. I mean, and 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 a lot of the scenery, a lot of the the iconography that you see in the Black Panther movie comes from this book. I would say a vast majority of it. Warrior Falls, um, um, Killmonger picking up uh, T'Challa and throwing him off the fall, off the falls. Um, You get to see Nakia. Nakia is a bad guy in this storyline because she's in love with T'Challa, but T'Challa likes Monica Lynn, so she's trying to kill her. There's a lot of things. It's a very busy storyline. There's a lot of things going on, a lot for the eye and the ear. And I'm not the ear, but the eye and, and, and the brain to just kind of process. You're reading, you're looking. It's, it's a treat for the eyeballs and the brain cells. So that's it. For my top five favorite Black Panther stories of all time. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you a Black Panther fan and you know of some memorable Black Panther stories? Uh, drop them in the comments below. Oh, mad shouts out to Tana Hesse Coates and his Black Panther run and his storyline that's still going on right now, the intergalactic empire of Wakanda. If you haven't read that yet, read it. It's a, it's on about issue 25 right now, Tana Hesse's run. Um, and I think that's the conclusion. I don't think 25 is out yet. I don't know. I will have to check on Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes. Wednesday is comic book day. Comic book Wednesday. If you don't know, don't trip. It's, it's a, it's a comic book nerd thing. Um, so like I said, one more again, comment, like, and subscribe to the Be Real with the Real page. I'm the Real. I'm going to be back with some more fun, exciting stuff for you to check out and comment on. And until then, y'all be good and be good to each other.